hi there. We're here in our garden, but we're in a special place in the garden. We're at our apiary, or where we have our honey beehives. My name's Noelle, and I'm here to introduce one of our volunteers, just one of the many volunteers here at Tamarack, but this is our beekeeper volunteers. We have a group of volunteers who help take care of our honeybees here, and they have an important role to play in the care of these honeybees. And I have a very special one to introduce you to, and her name is Dawn. Dawn's been doing bees here for how long? Uh, since 2005. Since 2005, and she's been taking care of the bees, and she comes out here every about 10 days to make sure they're doing well, and she'll do an inspection. She'll take a look at the hives and make sure that the bees are healthy. She'll check on the status of what they're doing, what they're up to. And with years of experience, she has been able to kind of keep track of the bees year after year and get a good steady idea of what they should be doing and where they should be at. Today, she's gonna show us more about what she does during an inspection, some of the tools she uses, and then we're gonna take a closer look at the bees and what the bees are doing right now in the hive. So, Dawn, come on up. We'll get a chance to um, kind of look closer at some of what you're wearing today and how you prepared for today's um, inspection. So can you tell us a little bit about what you have on? Sure. So I always wear, uh, uh, many beekeepers have a lot of different ways that they keep bees. Uh, my choices have been to wear, I have a pair of leather gloves uh, that protect my hands. They go, you can see all the way up and they have some lace elastic on it to make sure there's no sneaky bees that get down my, my gloves. I also have my full suit, my full body suit, just to, again, know exactly what I'm covering, no sneaky crevices or places for bees to creep into. And then I have my uh, net, my head veil, that I use to um, be able to see and have a clear vision of what's happening in the hive, but also to protect my head area from any bees that want to get closer than I like them to get. Is there any special reason why your suit's white? Uh, there are some ideas about that. Um, the white seems to be less um, irritating to the bees than some of the darker colors. Uh, so I'll notice sometimes if I'm out and, I, and they can see a little bit of the dark, uh, if I have a darker shirt on underneath, sometimes they can see it. I'll notice that they, they target that, they, they come after that. And so we think that maybe maybe the darker fur color of many of the predators of bees, uh, maybe that's a, for them that they come after. And the white seems to be a way to Set up? Sure. So we have, uh, so we here at Tamarack have kept, because we have a group of volunteers that keep the bees, we keep um, up to six hives at a time. Um, we keep them in a circle like this so that we can stand in the middle and always, always be working out from there. So you can see we've got this hive faced out to the fence. Um, we face these hives back to the fence too because they tend to like, you've noticed that they like the south southern facing entrances more. I think that it warms up faster in the morning and so then they like to um, it warms them warms them up faster and then get out because uh, they're not a warm-blooded creature as an insect and so they um, need that sun to warm them up in the morning and get them moving. So, so, we have, so yeah so we've tried to face them out as much as we can uh, we try to face them out towards the woods so that when they come out they have a straight shot to go out that way instead of out towards our public facing space um, as much as we can, um, but I'll, obviously they don't listen to us. Sometimes they do also go into the garden and pollinate all the flowers. Yeah, so like Don mentioned, we're here in our garden, a special space where there's a lot of plants for these honeybees to go and find pollen and nectar at. Um, what are they searching for this time of year? So this time of year they're using a lot of the maple trees, um, some of the flowers that you maybe don't notice as much uh, this time of year, but are flowering. So they're going and collecting pollen and nectar to feed the brood. They're starting to lay eggs and, and starting to get the hive back from the winter. So over the winter, all the bees cluster up and they stay real still and they really are just hanging out. They're not producing uh, eggs. The queen is not producing eggs and they're not raising any brood. But about a month ago or so, maybe a little earlier than that, depending, the queen started to lay eggs. That means they need pollen and nectar to feed those baby bees. Awesome. Well, let's take a look in these hives. All right, we're here with Dawn, taking a closer look at her hive or going through an inspection. Um, 
before we open anything, can you tell us some of the tools that you're going to be using today? Yep, so I always have my smoker with me. I light up my smoker and get it get it going. This this smoke has a calming effect on the bees, so and it also encourages them to go down into the frames inside the hive instead of coming out, flying around, getting chilly today. So I'll use the smoke to encourage them to stay in and kind of go down and eat some honey and, and just have a have a nicer day as I go through the inspection. So I'll use the smoke a lot. Um, I also have my hive tool. This is the one and only tool that a beekeeper really needs uh, besides the smoker. Um, all the other things we just get because we like to have fun toys. The, this is, um, the hive tool has a, a pry bar on it. It's got this scraper on it. Um, and it's the one and only thing that I need to kind of loosen things up. The bees tend to stick everything together. And then when I go in to inspect, I have to unstick things in certain places to do the inspection. What do um, they use to stick everything together? They use propolis. So they go up uh, this time of year, they go get some uh, propolis. It's like a sticky substance that comes off of some tree buds, some different tree buds that you can pull, they pull it off. They bring it into the hive. There's some ideas that they might be doing it for uh, medicinal purposes for themselves. That the, the, the U of M has some research uh, recently that shows that the, the amount of propolis they bring into the hive depends on how, if they're, if they have an illness, like a fungus or a bacteria, they'll bring in more propolis um, and different kinds of propolis too. And so th there's a lot of interesting research going on on propolis, but that's what they stick everything together with, which makes it difficult. Awesome. <laughs> so, so should I go in? Yep. All right. So first thing I do, I go ahead and I, I smoke them a little bit, give them a little uh, introduction, like here I come. And then I'm going to take off always have my hive tool. We have a heavy rock in case there's a heavy wind while well, we're not here. I take off the cover. So this is called a telescoping cover. Keeps them from getting wet and keeps the snow off. Inside we have an inner cover. Here. Put that down. And then we have the frames in here inside of the hive box. So those are the materials that we'll be looking at. Um, I don't see any bees in the very top. There's a very few of them. So I'm going to take this first box off. In the spring, they're building up their population. So most of them are probably down here. And then they'll get to this box in about a month, maybe less. So I'm going to lift this box off. It's not too heavy, which tells me that they don't have a lot of honey or things up in that part. Oh, but here you go. You can see the bees right here. They've got a little, I'm going to smoke them and you'll see them run down in. Oops. All right. There's a little bit of pollen patty left on this hive. Uh, we put this, we, we purchased this and put it on the hive so that in those very early weeks of brood production of babies and eggs, they don't, um, they have some pollen to feed them before the maples start to bloom. Um, but they've, they've used a lot of that one up. Now I'm going, oh, should Now I'm going to go in here. Oh, they really stuck it together today. Is that good for waterproofing or keeping out critters? I think they use it to keep out the wind in the winter, just like we go and we we make sure we weather strip and caulk our windows for the winter. Yep. They'll use it for that too. So if you have a, a crack in the hive over here, they'll fill it up so that it doesn't doesn't get the wind and rain inside. Very nice. Alright. So I don't see a whole lot happening on this frame that I pulled out. They've got the wax that they built on the frame, some of the wax comb that they built. That's the other product that they make from their bodies. They take the nectar and turn it into honey. They use the pollen from the trees and then they produce wax um, to put all of their resources in. So it's the honey and the wax. So I'm gonna pull one out here that should have some bees in it, um, some baby bees, some brood, I expect. We got a lot of pollen in this one. So I'm looking to make sure that they have lots of pollen like this. I see that they're starting to collect some nectar. So that is a good sign. I'm not gonna pull that one out too far. So what I wanna see is that they have some of the food resources that they need.
out here. They don't want to be out here. And, yep, this one has some brood. I think I might have the So, I hear you saying brood a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, can you explain more about what a brood is? Yeah. So, a brood is, so the, the queen lays her eggs in the honeycomb, in the wax, and when it hatches, it becomes, it becomes a larva, and the beekeepers refer to that as the, as the brood of the honey, of the hive. So it's also like the larva stage of the bee's life cycle. Yes. Now I'm going to walk over and show you some of the brood. Um, we have two kinds of brood here. We've got larvae that are in the larval stage. They haven't been capped yet, but we've also got um, some cap brood. They've got the cap brood look like they have, um, it almost looks like a cereal, like a puffy cereal. And then the larva, are, they look like little C-shaped worms, little little caterpillars that are very white, kind of liquidy. Um, and as the larvae get bigger, they'll put a cap, they'll, they'll spin a cocoon over that larva, they'll go through metamorphosis, and then they'll hatch as an adult bee. So you can see all these bees, you can see they're not very concerned about me, they're very concerned about the brood. So a lot of these bees that are taking care of the larva right now, they're running around, they're finding the nectar, they're getting some pollen, and they're feeding these larva. Um, but you can see they really don't, they're not interested in coming out of the hive very much. Here's a drone, I don't think we can see that. The drones are the male bees. There's, there's maybe up to 10% of the hive would be drones. Oh, I lost him now. He's right here. What are the other bees called that aren't drones? These are worker bees. They're all female. And then we have a very small number of drone bees. I lost him again. Oh look, he's eating the, he's eating the nectar. That's what he does. He eats nectar and then he flies out of the hive and, um, and mates with the queen. That's his, his purpose is reproduction. And the worker bees, the females, are doing all the collection of the honey and pollen and feeding the larva as well as defending the hive. It's me again, Noelle, and as Dawn's cleaning up her hive and putting everything back together, I just wanted to take a moment to thank Dawn for coming out today and doing an inspection and for all of her hard work all year long with the bees. Her and our um, beekeeping volunteers work really hard to take care of these bees. They do a lot on their own and they're very um, good at it, making wax, taking care of their young and going out to flowers and finding their food and helping to pollinate them. But we couldn't have the bees without our volunteers. So thank, thank you for joining us, Don. And I wanna invite all of you guys to um, follow our Facebook page. Go outside and see if you can find some honeybees. Maybe you have a neighbor or someone in your neighborhood that has hives and those honeybees are gonna be out and they're gonna be looking for pollen this time of the year. So keep an eye out for those insects, those honeybees out and about, and come back next week and join us as we talk about wildflowers and take a closer look at those plants that the bees are getting their food from. All right, thank you everybody.